So Galway Mayo finishes uh, all square in the opening round of the National Football League after Ryan O'Donoghue equalised with a late point as both sides uh, shared the spoils. I'm here now with uh, former Galway senior football manager John Mahoney and current Sawtill Knock the Car manager and St James's footballer Finta Cooney to look back on the game and briefly look ahead to Galway Ross Common. Before we do that, uh, don't forget that this podcast is brought to you by Steve Motor Group, Derek Galway, for your personalised shopping uh, vehicle experience. Uh, find out more at uh, stevemotorgroup.e. John, uh, coming to you first, a fair result, would you say, last night in Castlebury? To a certain extent, I suppose, I'd say probably Kevin McStay will be a bit happier, you know, the team that came from behind to get the to get the equaliser. Um, and I suppose Galway will see it probably as being unfortunate with Rob Finnerty's injury. And, and like obviously Tom O'Callaghan was injured before, you know, went into the game, so he wasn't available for, for consideration. So, but look, at I think both teams, no, no team lost honour, if you like. And it's, it's going to be for them, it's important that they got something out of last night's game, both teams. And the reality is, as I said there earlier off air, the reality is that with 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 Roscommon going up to play Galway and Mayo going up to play Armagh, two of the winning teams this weekend, this uh, this um, table could be turned on its head this ne- this time next week. So yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a better scenario for both teams that they're that they got a point rather than than they're they're in the game as it were, you know. It's an interesting point, uh, Fintan John touches on there uh, with the league being uh, so open, like that both of these teams and go MA will probably feel next weekend now that a result is very, very important because both teams won't really want one point after two games. No, and I suppose, um, yeah, it's obviously a very competitive division. They want to keep their Division 1 status, I suppose, first and foremost. Um, and I've, I've heard a lot of probably ex players saying that maybe teams don't want to actually go and, and win Division 1, but I thought um, just Roscommon coming, I suppose, next weekend, and Roscommon then, they had a big win today, obviously, over Tyrone, so they won't be they won't be fearing anyone. Um, but I suppose just get the, the two neighbours, I suppose, straight away in Division 1, possibly could be meeting them later in the year, so maybe it's a good time to meet them because there's probably a five- or six-month block there before we probably meet them again. Um so yeah, it's 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 obviously very tight, and Armagh obviously um, a big win I think last night against uh, Monaghan as well. So probably make Galway Mayo are a bit bit under pressure now as well. John, I, I think it shows. This shows why the the league is, is a, you know we always in the, in the GA terms the championship was the one to win, and it still is obviously it culminates in an All Ireland final. Uh, whereas in the premiership across the water, the league was always the, the top thing. But really, uh, the the league has, you know, compared to maybe when I started in management years ago, where where the league wasn't really taken that seriously. Now it's absolutely vital because it's linked to the to the Sam Maguire thing as well. And uh, you know, looking at the table tonight, even after one game, you have the two. Two former All Ireland champions, uh, uh, Tyrone and, and Kerry, with no points tonight. So auto- automatically, there's this teams. It's small pressure, nonetheless, because it'll all change. But it, it, I, I assume it'll change with with team, teams taking points of each other. But it's a great competition, and really, it really is whets the appetite. Like nearly fourteen thousand at Castle Bar last night, and five thousand nearly. I think it was common today, and so on. So. It's, uh, it's, uh, I think the, the, uh, the, I suppose the assumption that Mayo and Galway would be meeting in a Connacht semi final was common. I've kind of put a question mark into that. To, to, like, they look very impressive with a number of young players um, having come through, uh, you know, that we hadn't been Carroll from St. Bridges in, in that loan was the hero the man of the match up there today it was really really good I just watched it on, on TG Carr so like this the standard is very competitive in Connacht it's as simple as that and, and, and this will all be played out now with the three teams in Division 1 
Just something um, Pinton John touched on <clears throat> there earlier on, Robert Finnerty's injury, how much of a blow this could be for Galway. As, like just before he gets injured, he kicks a fantastic point and then runs into two kind of Mayo players. Maybe it's the Landon that kind of catches him out at the end. Poor Joyce referenced that he's in big trouble at the moment. And like every Galway sport is going to be sweating on the fitness because particularly in the last few months, the Sigerson, Salt Hill, Nocton Cara, and for Galway, Robert Finnerty really stood up to the plate. Yeah, uh, very unfortunate for Rob. Obviously, he is playing a lot of games. He's uh, playing college. I think he's one of the top scorers as well in the Sigerson with uh, DCU there. But um, look, I suppose that's that's uh, part and parcel. Just I suppose it gives someone else a chance. I suppose that's why the likes of he brought the likes of Ian Burke back. I think he possibly picked up a niggle before this match, which is why he wasn't uh, on the twenty six. But I'm sure he's he's not too far away. So obviously. That's in a way, not other counties would have maybe a former Earl star to come in and maybe pick up the pieces if it is Ian Burke. Uh, obviously, Tom O'Callaghan is obviously out as well. Uh, Desi Keneally possibly would love to get another game. I, I, I would say he was possibly a bit quiet, he would feel from his own standards, but we know what he can do in the Michael jersey at least. Um, so, yeah, look, and I think Killian McDade as well had a fairly heavily strapped knee. Now, I know he did play the full match and had a fine game, but I did feel that he even walk and he had a small bit of a limp. So obviously league is very important, but if, if they get enough points in the first couple of stages that they, they might be able to refresh these guys. And maybe as well, I was thinking, you know, the Mike Cullen lads, there's a lot of, they've been on the road, obviously with the club campaign, but in a way they were probably needed there last night because they were up to probably match sharpness. If you, if you understand me um, and maybe, you know, there's a lot of there was a lot of debutants there. Paul Kelly, uh, uh, Owen Kelly, sorry, came in as well, made his debut. I think it was eight or nine, my cousin lads. But I think they actually in the early stages might might actually boost us for a while, while the other, while maybe some of the other lads might get up to speed. John, obviously you worked very closely with Rob Finnerty, and the last time we were on, we were, I was talking to you about his performance has been really impressive for Salt Hill. Like watching the game last night, automatically you must have been disappointed in one sense when, when you've seen him, I suppose, being carried off by the two physios like that. My heart stopped, to be honest. Um, you know, when I saw it happening, I thought, uh, I, w w w firstly, what I thought it might be that he might have, because in the Tune game, the championship this year, he got a, his, his back seized up during the game and he had to come off. But obviously then I thought, it, I was afraid that it was, that it was a serious maybe knee injury or whatever, but I, I spoke to Rob this morning. He will be out for a number of weeks. I I, I don't know obviously how he, he was wearing a boot and he, you know that to protect it. So he will be out for a number of weeks. And I, I, earlier on I said, well, who would be the most pleased with the draw? That maybe Kevin McStay would be more so than Corey Joyce. Maybe the frustration of you know giving away the equalising point or whatever at the end, but. I, I I I think when you look at as as Fintan has said there, you you have um, like Fenerty was in a real rich vein of form. Tom O'Callaghan actually would be one. I think he had three goals got into Sigerson as well, as well as two in the FPD. So he was, and then you have Shane Walsh obviously caught up, you know, with the club. Uh, so like there's three top class forwards. So I think while while Corey might be frustrated with not taking the two points uh, last night. I think he'll, at the end of the day, looking in from outside, there's consolation there that there's a lot of stuff to come back in the goal or forward line in particular, you know, as, as, as the season goes on. And obviously it may affect, the, it'll affect the points maybe in the league, but, you know, Peter Cook really did well when he came on, uh, when he came on last night. Uh, he's, a, he's a fine addition just there, uh, John. Sorry, and um, like eight or nine Mike Cullen players in this squad. Does that surprise you in any sense? Ah, uh, not really. I suppose they're they're battle hardened. I mean, as you said, as somebody said, is it Swinton that said that they're 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 battle hardened at minutes? Uh, like actually, you know, for a player like Sean Kelly, who was played near every minute of ever all of Mike Cullen games, and and playing this, uh, <clears throat> you know, he got the man of the match last night. It's it, you know the danger the, the fear would be that it'd be kind of 
fatigue down the line when it, and, and the season is so cramped now. And I know Pori talked about giving breaks to people, but it, usually, you know, the way it is now with with so many injuries and so many, you might be able to give as many breaks. To, you know, he, player rotation isn't as possible as it might have appeared in theory a few weeks ago for, for him, you know. So it's, am I surprised? No, well, Moy Cullen were the county champions and they they were, they were they were within an ace of beating Glenn, getting to, getting to the getting to the All Ireland final. So you know, it, it's it's great for them that they have so many so many uh, players in the panel. I mean, I I was delighted that we 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 have six at the minute as well in there. Um, uh, so that's I mean, you club teams, your players are trying to. Achieve individual excellence that will be noticed for their county, and it's our job to develop them and encourage them to do that. So, I think you know, my Colin, you couldn't be critical of having so many there because they have they have been on top of the pile for the club scene this year. You know, just John there before I do bring Benton back in, um, you must be delighted in one sense with the way Daniel O'Flaherty has progressed because, like last night. For a young dad like playing wing back, he's really blossoming into a fine footballer now. He is. I mean, he has made very, very rapid progress, and in some senses, jumped the queue a little bit. But that's fantastic for him because, you know, I, I remember seeing him. Well, obviously, I saw him last year at under twenty level when I was only getting my own feet under the 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 table in in in, in Salt Hill, Nakhnikara. You know, but I saw him the, down the night. That may all beat them in the first round of the under twenty, which was the night of the big storm, as it were, which was mm. impossible. But even that night, in in that condition, Daniel Flaherty had 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 a really very good game. So he he actually benefited then from our run of the championship. And uh, you know, I, I I'm not surprised because he he is a, he is a big talent, and and uh, you know, he is a, like he's under twenty again this year. So he. He has a big, uh, a big um, career ahead of him, and that's what he needs to drive himself on. And you know, he has learned very quickly, but he still has a lot of learning to do as well. And that's 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 a fantastic uh, opportunity for him, uh, for him along the way. You know, so I, I'm not sure now. I think isn't this rule in that you can't be in your play senior football and number twenty football? Yeah, I know it wasn't last year, and it is. So. Oh, that will yeah. work out. I, I, I'm not sure. That's for the the Galway people, the, you know, the intercounty people to, to work out. But he has made great progress, and he is a great prospect. And I hope he just keeps driving on as as to all the other lads there, because we need that to happen in the club, you know. Galway stared into the game last night, Finton, and final scoreline finished up Galway two eight, Mayo one eleven. But their start, even with the first score they got, it it took a while. Five minutes in, Damien Comer looked really sharp last night for a lad who has been away for a few months. But when they got that long ball in early and they played it at the right times, it did really look a danger inside. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and I think it's probably um, a feature or a tactic that um, Matthew Tierney, I think he scored a few of them, even last year and the previous year, he has scored a few of them where he is just on the edge of the square and even looking at the match, it, I didn't realise he, where he was until the ball was kicked in. I, I would say Johnny Heaney's kick now was, he, I'd say he was going for a point now, but um, it did drop in and, and obviously, uh, like all good players, they anticipated. But um, yeah, there was, uh, yeah, I, Comers, I think he scored the first score, yeah, after five or six. Uh, I thought Gore were probably, especially in the first quarter, they were definitely in control. Um Thought though sometimes say if Mayo got a run of them and sometimes the the back the, it down through the middle they they were quite open at times. Um, obviously they got their goal from that. Um, as well. Uh, obviously a great goal. Uh, but maybe a bit of a bit of luck with that too. But there was definitely passages where they where they did kind of get open at the back a bit. And obviously John John Daly did did amazing work sometimes. But it was and and uh, McHugh as well. But I felt sometimes it, it was... Was that was from last, Mayo opening up from the press like if Galway didn't get the possession? Sorry? Was that from Mayo, like you talked about the space when I suppose Galway did press 
mm. that much in. But it seemed that Mayo got that ball into their hands. The goal at half back line was maybe too far up, and then there wasn't enough protection there. Yeah, I think Mayo went long there for a period, and I think Ruan and uh, um, Jordan Flynn. They were probably there was a period where they where they probably seventy eighty percent they they would have won it. Um, and then we were probably under pressure straight away. Um, so yeah, but I suppose um, we dealt with it well at times, as I was as I was alluding to there, McHugh and and, and Daly done some very in, good interceptions. But hopefully, we, we don't want it to be going that they they need to be done. If you get me, we want to kind of stop before that happens. But uh, yeah, no, I was I was probably very impressed with the debutants, especially Daniel O'Flaherty there, as you said. And Owen Kelly played very well, and um, Mulcahy as well, and uh, cornerback. You know, um, probably he's known as a man marker in Galway, and obviously Liam Silk isn't going to be around, so maybe maybe they're looking at him for that job as well. The goal in itself, John uh, James Kerr's goal last night, taken superbly. Like it, it's people are already talking about it as one of the goals, the best goals so far. But like the way he just took that was superb well it, it looked very spectacular I, and, and I suppose when you be t- when you be talking to a forward uh, if you're coaching a forward when you're hitting the ball you you'd be advising them to hit it low low and hard uh, because the goalie has to get down on it then but in fact it looks more spectacular when it's on the roof than it hit the, I think it's hit the is it the crossbar and yeah, down yeah, it yeah. oh James Carr has a has a has a an amazing ability to do that. If you remember, I think in the in the playoff, was it in Limerick? Was it the round four qualifier? Yeah, in, in a qualifier against Galway, he got two goals, I think, in, in a game. So he he has he has uh, that ability to do that. I I suppose his his goal was you know he went for it. It was an opportunity an opportunity goal. He took it very well. Matthew Tierney similarly, as, as Fenton has described there with the height. Thing. I I thought the 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 other goal the other goal were goal that that Sean Kelly got. I, it was a it was a different goal than the rest of them. It was a team goal, and I I again I, I spent long last year admiring Killian McDade's the way that he brought the brought Galway back into the game against Armagh, and the way that he held up that ball until Kelly was gone last night was absolutely. I, I haven't seen it in a replay. I'll be seeing it later on here now, but it's it's. Um, you know, he, he really has the ability to pull the strings and that that's he made it, he put it on a plate for Sean Kelly and Sean Kelly obviously finished it well. So that was a brilliant team goal. Uh so like it's it's it was great to see so many so many goals last night, uh, of real high quality, both in the opportunist taking of them and like I mean Matthew Tierney too, like Colin Colin Reed, the new Mayo goalie. He looked comfortable apart from that one time when the height of Matthew Tierney and Tierney, as Fenton has said there, has made a, a you know, part of his game to, to I think, the, the way that they're rotating and out. Um, it, it, they seem to have... It. See, that's what happened. The, the benefit of the goal we got from having a run in the championship, you develop telepathy between people and you, you don't necessarily, he, he mightn't even necessarily have been changed in the full forward, but he might have just gone in for Damien was outside or whatever range but to have, I don't know. But uh, he did that against Monaghan a few years ago as well. Like, so, like both Carr and, and Tierney have done that, but it's great. It, 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 it's, it, it's important in the, in the modern game. Some of the games yesterday in, in the lower divisions were four points to three and five points to three. So it's nice to see a bit of. Spectacular football, and I see Callum O'Rourke could be a happy man tonight too, having scored. Is it three nineteen? Three fourteen, I think it was. Three fourteen against against Cork. But anyway, that's like the, the, there is quality players uh, in in both Galway and Mayo that can take opportunities like that. But as, as somebody said there, one of you said Damien Comer looked really really sharp at this time of year. Um, uh, in the early stages of the game. Now, one issue, one area that I think Galway, uh, this was my own observation, um, is their kick out was causing them problems uh, in the sense that most of them were long um, and Mayo seemed to, apart from a few great catches by Damien Comer and I forget who else, maybe 
um, McDade uh, at times as well. But there was a lot of breaking ball uh, there and it just didn't seem to be as modern kick out is, 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 is more organised. Mayo seemed to be, they were taking shorter ones, but they seemed to have more of a system in play than Galway had. So I'm sure that's something that Galway will be working on as they go through the, as they go through the league, you know. That probably came as well, I suppose, when you talk about the kickouts, uh, Finton. Galway did seem to, I suppose, bring it, kind of decent seemed to aim to, I suppose, kick it into the crowd most of the time and try and box it off and win the breaks. But Mayo, probably as the game went on, just became that bit better of winning the breaks. Yeah, they did. Yeah, it was kind of alluded to earlier that we were probably on top for the first quarter, but then... I suppose Mayo kind of came back into it there at the start of the second half. Um, and the likes of um, the likes of Jordan Flynn and Matthew Ram, these guys, they really started to, I suppose, to just, I suppose, get the foothold around the middle. I think Matthew Ram there at the start of the second half kicked a great score and that kind of spurred them on, I suppose, before um, Sean Kelly then, obviously, we needed that goal, I think, at the time because I think Mayo had kicked, Mayo had kicked two at that stage in the first couple of minutes. Um, but yeah, um, I suppose Galway as well, they have a good tactic. I think John Manny said there, Comer caught a few. They obviously bring Comer out into the centre forward position and they must, that they, they everyone else go, it spreads from the side and it's just a big one down the middle and, um, and possibly I think centre back, uh, the male centre back, um, was it Durkin or, or one of those? I'm sure if he's a better leap, Comer wouldn't be obviously the tallest, but he's very physically strong. So I think that's an asset we can use along with Matthew Tierney as well um but yeah i think maybe as well <clears throat> i i think just when 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 the break is on when the breaking ball is on after the kick out maybe we just need to win it and that's why that's why maybe we were if may owe it that's why maybe we were caught a bit in on the run when they ran when they ran down through the center sometimes maybe we maybe we were committing, committing bodies to the break but for whatever reason we were just weren't winning them and if they all won them then we were kind of on the back foot chasing then a bit. Matthew Tierney, you mentioned him there, Fintan. Like for you, where do you feel his uh, best position at the moment is? Yeah. Um, he is a, he, he's a, tr it's tricky for me to be honest. He's such a, he's such a natural footballer for such a big man. He's beautiful to watch, like to be honest. Um, but it's, it's, it's tricky. I think, Sometimes he does, he he kind of goes in and out of games maybe, or maybe he does a lot of uns un unseen work that, that we don't realise as well. Um, but definitely maybe putting him inside in the square, I think more often we can definitely get joy out of that, um, as we've seen with the goal there. Um, and then I know he's number 11 on his, on his, on his shirt most of the time. Uh, he does go up for the hot balls then as well uh, in the midfield for you know, a start of each half. I think, I think probably between the midfield and, and and full forward for me, I think there's enough of guys kind of around the forty that that can do the job that he can do anyways. But he brings something extra around middle field or inside and full forward line. If you understand me, like there's other guys that can do that eleven role. Shane Walsh, obviously, or Johnny Heaney. They can. I think we should use his height a bit more. John, do you think I think you're going to come in there? But just before you do, like with Matthew Tierney, Paul Conrad was out midfield last night, and there has been different talks maybe that Paul Conrad could be used as a forward this year. Do you think there could be a bit of a role reverse where you could maybe put Tierney out and put Conrad in? Yeah, certainly. I mean, it's only it's only the the, the lads that are the management and the coaches in Galway. It looks it looks an obvious an obvious thing maybe at times but I, I suppose the other thing is what age is Matthew Tierney now is about 23 you see or yeah just coming 23 like he has played an awful lot of football I think he played every minute of every Sigerson game last year and every minute of every league game and more or less nearly every minute of of, of the championship as well so that's you know what I what I spoke about earlier there about with the Rob injury the Colhan injury the Shane Walsh been out because of the club situation and I'm not sure who else uh, uh, like that's where you, if you had everybody available you'd be able to rotate and give a bit of give it a bit of a break because 
what, what really is well, one of the aims that any management would have would be to, that these lads are really fresh after the league as well. But you obviously want to maybe you know win the league if you can. I think Park has talked about that, and that would that would be great. But if you could do that with with a little rotation at times. So Matthew Tierney has options in lots of places. He's a fine footballer, and midfield might be might be a and, and Paul Conroy. I mean, some of the games that he has played in over the last couple of years, he has taken some brilliant brilliant scores and he's big and his experience is is hugely important I suppose people mention I suppose as he as he gets on in years whether whether he you know would be used sometimes as an impact so they all have that issue at the moment with with, with um, Aidan O'Shea as well and things like that uh, so you know so it's about putting all those pieces the jigsaw like Paul 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 Conroy has still a lot to offer at whatever role that is in. And I'm sure he'd do it in the forwards as well. And Matthew could do it outside, you know, but that's again for the, the people that make these decisions. Didn't just to bring in there, Paul Conroy, obviously the club man of yours and like tremendous for him to play last night, I suppose, with his father passing away and everything that's went on in the last few weeks. And he was really like last night, he really got in the end of some crucial turnovers for Galway. But where do you feel Paul Connery can be most efficient for Galway this year? Yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah, he's he's obviously um, he's definitely kind of I suppose spiritual leader of the team. There, he, his presence alone um, is is massive uh, on the pitch. Um, I I feel. Um, I think probably um, he needs to be maybe. You know, he needs to be maybe, obviously we're in Division 1 here now, we need to pick up points, but I was kind of surprised that he was starting if uh, yesterday, just, he did, I suppose, he had a long club campaign with ourselves, um, and then uh, uh, he had a tough few weeks there and stuff like that, but um, he was drained, I suppose, at the end of last year, just from, you know, chatting to him myself and stuff like that, so I was a bit surprised he was, he was starting, because he was probably footballer of the year there in May, June last year, and, you know, he's a lot of football Matthew Tierney has a lot of football under his his legs and he's only 23, but Paul has been playing midfield for 10, 12, 12 years, you know. Um, but I think I think um I think around the middle in midfield, I suppose, especially start him off there, I would anyways. Um and if you have to put him in then towards, I suppose, the the la- latter stages of a game, I would. But I think just around the middle, his presence is 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 just second to none and, and he can pick out passes um you know his kick pass there even to Comer last night I think and his fitness there's there's no issue with his fitness I think there won the crucial stage around the middle last night he won a free um around the 65th minute um you know just small things like that um but um I, I would say around the middle anyways number one and then he, he can always put him inside as well. John mentioned earlier Armstrong about the goal and Killian McDaid, and then you, it was really funny for the goal. You had Owen Kelly and Sean Kelly side by side running, and he, it was hard to know which Kelly was actually going to get the ball. It was Sean, and like he all he always has that in his locker, Sean Kelly. I, I suppose it's what makes him such a special player when you talk about from a defensive point of view. But just those runs forward, like they're they've been trademark Sean Kelly runs for Galway over the past few years. Yeah, um, I suppose, you know, he's wearing number three in his back and I suppose he started off his career like, remember around the half forward line and stuff like that. So he's well used to being around the middle um, and then obviously got reverted probably back to full back maybe when Sean McCurran got injured. Probably that was really maybe cementing his importance back there. Um, but I suppose, yeah, he's ultra, ultra fit, like, um, you know, going personally and just... I think he's he's definitely the fittest guy on the panel, I would say, and he's renowned locally, I suppose, for his cross country and stuff like that when he was younger. So he's well able to get up and down the pitch. And obviously, I I wouldn't want to be the full forward or corner forward running after him um all that way. But uh, um yeah, he's just a brilliant reader of the game, I suppose. You know, and he took his goal very well last night. I thought, you know, he, he definitely did place it in the corner. I just watched a replay of it there earlier on and. Yeah, obviously he hit the post and went in, but he definitely, definitely was placing it anyway. It wasn't just a, a, a powerful, you know, hope for the best. You'd, you'd pity the poor GPS system that's trying to keep track of him. I'd say, I'd say it's overheating. 
I'd say it, it needed a few batteries less. It, 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 the, Sean didn't need the batteries, but the GPS system did in some way because uh, they might have been, haven't come up against him in the, in the championship last year in the club championship and seen him at that semi-final and like even last night he was down he, he had to get treatment and he was bounced up and he was away again as if nothing had happened and that happened so many times in the club championship as well so he really is you know that he, it's he's an unbelievable player in the, in the way that he can keep going uh, at the level he's going at and, and he's vital and I, I think you know he, he is and the, the way that he is, it's a bit like Seamus Moynihan years ago for, for Kerry. Like when Kerry, Seamus Moynihan was a centre back or a wing back or even a midfielder. And they had a problem at full back after who was it? Got injured or was, was it Barry years ago? A year two young lads to remember. Mike that, McCarthy, was it? Could have, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but I mean, he re, Moynihan had reinvented himself as a full back and, 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 you know, one of the best ever. And now Sean Kelly has basically, when, is it Sean McCurns and Sean Anthony O'Kelly had been there and, and the lad from Club Bar. And he has filled that role. I, I, you know, I, I, would, I would think Gall and, and Kieran Malloy is a huge loss as well to, to Galway. But it would be, it'd be just, a, it'd be, it'd be fantastic for Galway if, if if I don't know where Mike Hearns is at now or whatever, but if if he could nearly be released from 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 full back and and because he is he has a huge amount of of ability to get forward and 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 obviously you 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 have it's near near to get forward Lee Keegan I like from a wing wing back position or whatever so that's just uh, you know that's something that uh, just observing it uh, and admiring it. I just, I, I think that it's unbelievable what he's done over the last couple of years at club and count. Some spectacular performances by him, uh, John, as we're saying there. Did, John, did you think on 51 minutes, Conroy, I suppose, backs up a point after that goal, goal he goes 2-6 to 1-6 in front? Did you think they were in, beginning to take control of the game then? Yeah, but you no, know, that's the, that's another point. Like the black cards had a big part to play in this game, yeah. but I, the, like obviously Matthew Rowan in particular for Mayo was was it was it for them when he came back in, you know, and he came in there. Killian McDade's one came at a very bad time for Galway, uh, you know, after after he had um, that was after he had set up the goal and all that, wasn't it? Was, yeah, it was sixty-two that, minutes. Matt Day got it on for a few minutes, a minute, few minutes at the end. Um, so, you know, from that point of view, the the, the, the and 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 is it Owen Kelly had one as well? But I think the McDade one had a had a bigger. So the, to answer your question, you know, that had that was a, two things. Mayo over the years have shown brilliant resilience to come back and to. Never, never bow the knee, you know, and that's that is that's part of their culture now. But another part of it is, if if McDade was on that field for the last ten minutes, I don't, I think Galway would have points today, you know. But that's that's I, I feel that, you know, his, the way that he he links play and and, and spots the the way to, you know, that he can focus on what needs to be done in really crisis times. I think that that was a major. A major loss for Galway and a major plus for 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 Mayo at that and at that crucial last ten minutes the, of, of normal time. Well, I think as well Mayo it was it um, Mayo had a black card there and he and he came back on was it on the sixty fifth minute? It so did. Was, That's so Matthew, yeah. Matthew Ryan. Like so. So it, that it, added to it as well. It, it yeah it it yes it, it it compounded if you like the loss of McDade to Galway yeah. uh, and and. It, it allowed Matthew Ryan to to, to 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 close off that area around the middle. So they all were bringing back, a, 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 you know, a fantastic midfielder, and Galway were losing a fantastic midfielder. So that I think to answer your question, Paul, about the you know, did I think that hold on? I think they would have if 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 circumstances were 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 different there. But again, as I said, it's you know, they all. Like that's where McStay will be delighted with the resilience that they showed that they like and Ryan Donohue in particular he ended up at was it seven points and all those four threes or three or four but uh, mm -hmm. and of course they'll be looking as as Galway will be looking to get 
Shane Walsh is and the Rob Finnerty's fishing back. They all be looking for, Tom, for Tommy Conroy as well. You know, they'll, they'll be. He's he's supposed to be close to it, but he hasn't played any Sigerson or he hasn't. He wasn't. Yeah, be interesting to see what he play on Tuesday now for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He he's supposed to be close to it anyway, so it'll be interesting to see what's happening there. Vinton, John touched earlier on on Peter Cook and he brings this different dynamic. You could see most of the time Cook got the ball, his first instinct was to kick it and I suppose it, it gives going maybe a different dimension in that half forward line with him. But a player as well is probably being one of the top club performers in the last year's own Finnerty. Like he came on and won that free late on. I think he got a turnover um, back and go his own half towards the end of that game as well. He's definitely a player that's Put his hand up to poor Joyce as well, similar enough to Cook. Yeah, definitely. And I think, uh, yeah, Cook had, had obviously been there, has played before and, and played consistently enough before where Finnerty is a different dynamic. He's been there for a few years, but probably hasn't hasn't got too much game time. But all the same, thing came on there and all out in final. He's, he's nearly an experienced player to come on. Uh, without having too much game time under his belt, um, and he has he's a bit of physicality to him as well, which I suppose you know if you're looking like Dean Ian Burks and all and Desi Keneally, they're maybe a bit similar. Where where Finnerty inside, we we probably don't have another corner forward like him really with that physical kind of stature he has. Um, so yeah, they're they're all up for grabs. I think Peter Cook is a massive addition. Like he's very very comfortable on the ball. Um. Another big man like to have out, out around the middle and he kicked a fantastic 45 there at one, one stage in the wet. Uh, in, in you know, uh, Yeah, like that, that's another thing to add to his locker. Like, you know, Matthew Tierney was on them last year. He can kick them as well. So off left and right, I think, well, Shane Walsh obviously as well. So um, look, there's there's plenty of positives. I think it's nearly a question of who would be taking it if you get me. So um, yeah, Peter Cook back. Um, look, he looks fresh. I think maybe the the breakaway he went traveling a bit as well i know he was in america but i think even before that he was traveling a bit um you know so probably just whetted it up his appetite a bit more yeah uh, uh, john maher from our own, from salt hill too has as you know got a good run in the fpd there so uh, like there seems to be a lot of options and that, i suppose when you when you think of when you think of we say the the issue probably in the in the All Ireland final was that there wasn't as many options maybe uh, that were you know were ready to be used or whatever. Like it looks like that that has that is being addressed by some of those things, some of those players that we've talked about there. And like the Patrick Kelly as well, another big big yeah. I think he's, he's injured at the moment, but I think yeah. he's been close another yeah. week or two. Um, he, he might be back then and return. I definitely had to. John, do you think the thing go away and look back on was when Ryan O'Donoghue took that free, they did have the ball in their hand and O'Donoghue obviously gets another chance and makes no mistake then, but is that something Galway can learn from, I suppose, being a point up in that situation? It is, but I suppose the fact that it that it was in that last couple of minutes, the last minute or the last, you know, it will be noticed more that that's the difference. But then, you know, there was a lot of those little things through the game that would, you know, and, and we've talked about, you know, the black cards and all all of that. And yes, it it it, it is in the in the in the heat of in the heat of battle. It's you know, it's it's the fact that Mayo came back and Donovan got the second chance at it. That's that's brilliant for them, but I, I don't think that's uh, I, I, you know I don't I don't think you can you, you I suppose you can if you want to look on it that way that that was the that's why it was a draw rather than the win for you know for 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 Galway but you know there was other little, smaller incidents in the game as right throughout it that you know that so uh, you know I I don't you see look at last night's game was very exciting because it was so close as well it wasn't. The quality wasn't yeah. fantastic. You know, you have to be, it was, you know, and uh, uh, an old or uh, a veteran player of mine in my days, Kevin Walsh, always said, you never you never win all Ireland's in January. You know? So, uh, and that's that's why you can't be too hard. Like, the, the, the Dome is fantastic for the FBD, 
but it's 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 a way it's a way a bit from reality. So in effect, you know, apart from the few maybe challenge matches that Galway and Mayo would have played, and I know that they and some of the challenges they played was different team in the second half than they did in the first half, and you're experimenting and all that kind of stuff. Last night it was understandable that there was a bit of rustiness on both teams, and 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 so like it's not the finished product yet on either side. You know? So it. it that's so. That's why I say that uh, when you, you can look on and say, well, a, a point apiece is fair enough because the destiny of both Mayo and Galway in the league is going to be decided at the next six games. I think yeah. as well, um, Mayo. I'm sure they're training in maybe a different places as well. I think they are training in the dome as well, so that might have, you know, maybe it was a small bit heavy for them and, and stuff like that as well. So that you know. Yeah. And yeah. Galway then probably yeah. are a yeah. bit behind them as regards the, the, the block of training that's been done. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's all them factors that come in. But um, as I said, I'm sure they're not. There's no panic buttons being pressed yeah. in, in, in anywhere, you know, as a result of the first league game. It's about, it's about building on it. And, and next, Sunday's, next Sunday's results will be crucial, obviously, because if, you know, if, 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 if either Mayor or Galway lost next weekend, then you you're talking about three points being gone, you know. So that'll it'll it'll sharpen the, the focus if you like and, 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 and so on. Whereas teams that have won uh you know whether it, whether they they think they'll have it that they have it all solved, it's not all solved for them either yet. Binton, as John was talking there about the table carrying Tyrone towards the bottom, Ross coming on the top at the minute. It may It'll nearly give, I suppose, supporters and players excitement this week now, Roscommon Galway, Roscommon being top of the table. like It, it really spices things up for the game coming up uh, this Sunday. Yeah, it does, yeah. I think um, I thought Roscommon were, were very impressive today. They looked very sharp. Um, obviously, Tyrone they didn't have a good year last year as well, so they're probably still trying to iron out a few of them issues. Um, but yeah, obviously, the other big team in Connacht will come, come into town next Sunday. So, yeah, they definitely bring a buzz uh, to the place. Um, and, yeah, we're probably un, not under too much pressure, but a small bit of pressure. But I suppose if, if, if you go out and, and lose next weekend, then you're, you're really looking, I suppose, you're looking then Tyrone, Tyrone as well in your back patch. The next match, you, you kind of nearly have to win that, I suppose. So um, there definitely will be looking to get something out of the match. But there should be a good a good, good buzz. Um, and then obviously looking to the summer as well where, you know, the kind of championship and stuff like that. So um, we, we know where we're at against our, our, our neighbours anyway. Porik made an interesting point, John, uh, just to finish up now, um, in his interview at the end of the game, saying it's good that the players are disappointed with a draw against Mayo. And, yeah. like, it's good to have that in the back of their minds now going into the Roscommon game. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, like, it's not a... Dis- it, it, that should drive them on. And, mm-hmm. and like... Uh, you know, getting a result next week now uh, is will 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 be more incentivized by by not getting the win last night, uh, and uh, you know, so look at you know, Galway or Roscommon are always a difficult team to to beat, but like even with the injuries they have, you know, and and, and the absentees. Always still have it in them to 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 get a result, you know, and and if the the mental side of it is is more focused after last night, so there's no, as I said, there's no need for panic panic buttons anywhere. Absolutely, and that game going Ross Common, um, 140, 145 uh, in Pierce Stadium on Sunday, um, a huge game to look forward to. Um, just to finish up the show, don't forget that this podcast is brought to you by Steve Moore Group, supplying a wide variety of new and use quality vehicles. Uh, for more information, visit stevemotorgroup.e. But a big thank you uh, to John O'Mahony and Pinto Cooney uh, for coming on the podcast. You're welcome.